streets on the water. Welcome to the show, y'all. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Let me get back to David. You know, the devil worshiper, right? This is part two of the devil worshiper told his cell he didn't want to pray in the cell. Now, here's the thing. David, he's spiraling out of control. He's lost his mother. He's not sure what's going on. He's just angry. He's, he's upset. He's pissed. He's spiraling out of control. So he goes and gets some weed. He can't really pay for it. He lies says he's going to pay for it. But his mother is the one that would usually every now and then when she could afford it was send him some money in so he can buy his commissary and, and pay for his drugs and all that old kind of stuff. But now his mother was gone. Now the dudes that he got the weed from, they didn't know that. They had no idea that this dude could pay for this stuff. You know, he's been paying. So when the time comes for him to pay for the weed, he tell him he can't pay for it. They whoop it. They whoop it. He think it's funny, though, because at the end of the day, he thinks that this ass whooping that he's taking is going to cover the cost of that weed. And that ain't how it works. You get whooped, you still going to pay. Still going to pay. So he goes back to the cell banged up. I messed up, nose bleeding and all this and that. He gets in the sink. He's cleaning himself up. So Marcus looked at him. He said, man, you straight? He looks back at Marcus. Don't say nothing. Now, keep in mind, a lot of time has passed. You know, a few weeks have passed since, you know what I'm saying, that Marcus prayed for him, right? And they never really talked about it. So David doesn't respond to him when he asks him, is he okay? He just looks at him. He goes back to washing his face in the sink and getting the blood out of his nose and all that old kind of stuff. Then here comes somebody knocking on the door. And when they knocked on the door, they tell him, hey, David, I need to talk to you. So he said, hold on a second, man. He said, no, nah, I need to talk to you now. So Marcus is sitting on the bunk, and he can see past David, and he sees this dude got something in his hand. He said, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. So he jumps up, and he goes to the door. He said, uh, hold on, give him a second. He shuts the door. And when he shuts the door, he tells that he said, hey, man, he got a pocket knife. So David's eyes get real big. He said, what? He said, yeah, he got a pocket knife in his hand. So now David peeps the scene. And he figures out, he said, oh, when he stepped to that door, dude was finna pop him with that thing. So it's really getting intense. So David says, man, pop the door. He done grabbed his own pocket knife and he rushes out there. And when he rushes out there, it's two or three people. They read it. They got him surrounded. Now, Marcus don't know what to do. But he goes out there and he gets back to back with his seven. He gets back to back. But this fool ain't got no pocket knife. He ain't got no pocket knife. David looking at him like, what are you doing? Because see, what Marcus don't know, David really want to die. He don't care no more. He don't care no more. His mama's gone. He don't believe in God. He don't care no more. But Marcus telling him, I'm with you, man. We sell this. He ain't thinking clearly. You feel me? That's what I say anyway. He ain't thinking clearly, but he's standing back to back with David. And you got these two dudes on the side that got pocket knives and another dude that don't have a pocket knife, but he got something in his hand that he going to use to hit him. And they telling Marcus, man, get out of the way. Get out of the way, man. Marcus said, man, we ain't got to do. He said, man, what he owe you, man? What he owe you? So the dude that's sitting on the side that done sent them, right? He tell him, man, he owe me $50, man. So Marcus said, man, I'm going to pay it, man. I'm going to pay it. Just let me get on the phone. I'll pay it. I'll send it wherever you need to send. So the dude on the side said, man, now it's $100 now. He said, I'm going to pay it, man. Just stand down. I'll pay it. So he tell the dudes, stand down. They walk away. David looking at him. Like, man, stay out of my business, man. Stay out of my business. And then he walk off to the cell, slam the door behind him, lock the Marcus out the cell. So he's sitting in the cell for an hour by himself, just sitting there pouting. Marcus is getting on the phone. He done made the call 
got the money sent to the dude that David had gotten the weed from and paid the debt off. So now that the debt was paid off, David in the clip for now. Marcus go to the cell, knock on the cell, say, let me in, man. He opened the door, he let him in. He go on the cell, he said, man, what's going on with you, man? He said, man, you can't be bringing trouble to the cell like that. See, now Marcus, like I say, been locked up before. So he know what it is. He ain't green, he just trying to live different. And he tell David, you can't, you can't do this, man. You can't come like that. You can't be bringing trouble to the cell like that, man. He said, what's wrong with you, man? Again, David breaks down. And I'm saying this because I want you to understand that a lot of dudes in here, they be going through a lot of stuff and they don't know how to say, they don't know how to articulate, they don't know how to verbalize what it is that they're going through. So they do all this destructive stuff. They do all this destructive stuff. They blame everybody. They blame God. They blame their family. They blame everybody but themselves. And they act out destructively. And that's what David was doing. But Marcus, because he had changed his life. Don't get it twisted. Marcus knew what it was like to live like that. He was never so far gone that he worshipped the devil. But he knew what it was like to feel like nobody gave a damn about you. He knew what that felt like. So he was sympathetic and empathetic to what David was going through. But at the same time, we're in the penitentiary. We're in the penitentiary. Wake up, man, before you end up dead. Because here's the thing. When people come to the cell to take care of the beard, they usually don't leave the cell untouched. The cell usually gets to because they don't know if the cell is riding with the other cell or not. They don't know, so they get everybody. Plus, most of the time, they don't want to leave no witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? So if David has trouble, that means Marcus has trouble as long as he's in that cell. And something was stopping Marcus from moving out. He just did not want to move out. So then Marcus, he gets down on his knees and he's praying. He's asking the most high, what is it? Because he wants to go. He don't want this trouble, but he's one of these people now that he pray about every decision that he made, and he hadn't got an answer about moving out, so he wouldn't move. He don't want to move. He don't want to make a decision unless the Most High is telling him. He don't want to do it. He wants a sign. He wants something. So he's stuck there having to deal with what's going on with David. David goes out and gets in trouble again. Now he comes back to the cell. Now him and Marcus is fighting. But Marcus is trying to do everything he can not to get pulled back into the mud. He's trying to do everything he can not to get pulled back in the mud. But he tells himself when he's laying on that bunk after him and David had got to fight, he said, if he hits me one more time. Now, don't get it twisted. He didn't whoop Marcus. They just got to fight and got to tussle. But Marcus wasn't going to take no more of that. He said he was done with that. He was going to go on and show him a little something. So sure enough, a week or so later, it happened again. Marcus put hands on him. I'm talking about put hands on him, set him down. But this time, when he put hands on him and set him down, he told him, he said, man, let me tell you something, man. I don't know what it is that's going on with you, but you got to get it together. And this time, it'll break through. Had a breakthrough. David was like, man, help me, man. He was spiraling out of control. He wasn't only just smoking weed in there, started using cocaine. He can't pay none of his bills. He owe everybody now. Marcus told him, he said, man, I'm not going to let you use me. I'm not going to let you use me. I'm not paying no more of your debts. I ain't doing none of that. I'm not your sucker. He said, but if you want my help, man, he said, the best thing that I can tell you to do is pray. So you got to pray. So Marcus looked at him and David looked at him. He said, man, I'm not doing that. He said, oh, you're going to do it. You're going to do it or you're going to die. Eventually, you're going to die. So visit came that weekend and Marcus went to visit. And lo and behold, David's daddy showed up and visit. David hadn't had a visit for years. So he comes out there to visit and his dad is sitting out there and he's talking to him. 
Marcus goes by the table, introduces himself. David introduces Marcus to his dad and tell him all the things that he's doing, this, this, and that, trying to pretend as if everything was okay. But David's daddy knew better. He knew better. He knew better. You want to know why he knew better? Let me tell you why he knew better. Because this is how stuff works in here, right? Now, any other time, I would be messed up with what I'm about to tell you. But in this situation, I get it. See, Marcus had gotten gone through David's personal mail, got his daddy's address out of the mail and wrote his dad a letter and told his daddy that his son is spiraling out of control. He's going to die in here. Somebody don't come and let him know that he's loved. Somebody's got to do that. So David's daddy never wrote Marcus back because Marcus told him, don't write me back. If you care about your son, just show up. And he showed up. So when Marcus went to the table and they were introduced to each other, David didn't even know they already had been introduced to each other by something greater and powerful, way more powerful than what he had going on. So Marcus looked at David's dad and they winked at each other. And then Marcus went back to sit down with his parents and he was telling his parents what was going on over there at the table. And they were proud of him because he had changed. He had changed. He started to care about more people. See, this situation was more about Marcus than it was about David in its own respects. Because David used to be one of the most selfish people. I mean, Marcus, excuse me, Marcus used to be one of the most selfish people that walked the planet, only cared about himself, selling his drugs, doing all these things. But now he had put somebody else before himself. David had given up, had given up all hope of anything. When he walked away from God, he had given up. He had given up. But God hadn't given up on him. And I know that a lot of you listening to this particular episode might not think that this episode is along the same lines of the other episodes that I do, but it is. It is. Because what you need to understand is that the common thread in all the episodes that I do is the most high. Sometimes it's not as easy to see. Because a lot of the stuff that goes on in here is because people have given up, don't care. They're trying to run an old game in a new way and ain't no new way to do the old thing. It ain't no right way to do wrong and you still end up with the same results. But there's one way to get off that ramp and get on the ramp that's going to help you. But most people in here won't do it because people out there don't know how to show that they care. I've said before, I'll say it again, it's not about the commissary, it's not about the money, so to speak. Now, that's needed. Don't get it twisted. Everybody likes to eat their chicken and ice cream. I know I do. You feel what I'm saying? But more than that, I want you to tell me, I need you to tell me that you care about me. I need to hear it because in here you don't hear it. And on top of you telling me that you care about me, I need you to show me. Come see me. Or talk to me on the phone. When I'm acting silly and I'm then correct me. Because that's what we need. And that's what David needed. David needed somebody to correct him in the right way. With love. Now let me get back to the story. Now look. Time goes on. David's dad is still coming to visit him and all this and that, right? Now he still got all this time to do. You understand what I'm saying? And him and Marcus are still sellers and everything is working out good. And all this and that. David... <laughs> Excuse me. David done got off the dope. He's doing fine. He done got all the way off the dope. He's doing fine. And that's how this one ends. That's how this one ends. This dude found somebody that cared enough about him to try to figure out. He didn't, Marcus didn't walk away from him, even though he wanted to. He wanted to abandon him. You feel what I'm saying? He just wanted to get away so he could have peace. Remember Yahshua in the Garden of Yosemite when he said he asked the Father, could this cup pass from him? And the answer was no. You still got to go through with it. And that was a similar situation that Marcus was going through. He wanted to get away from that, but the Most High said, no, stay where you at. So sometimes, people, come on, family. Sometimes you might want to run and get away from a situation where you think it might be causing you problems, where it might be bad for you. But sometimes, sometimes the Most High wants you to stay there so that you can be an example for the individual that you're associated with and dealing with. Be sure who you're listening to. Be sure of who you're listening to. 
This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I said, peace, y'all. I've been trying to breathe on the water.